IT hustle without a computer science degree, but technical coach Ralph is here to prove you wrong. Get ready for some jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into this lucrative industry. Listen up, tech enthusiasts! Are you ready to break through into the IT field, but feel like you need a computer science degree to make it happen? Think again! Technical coach Ralph has some exclusive, mind-blowing secrets to share with you. Get ready to be blown away by his jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into the tech industry without a computer science degree. So get your notepad ready, because Technical Coach Ralph is going to change your life forever. Buckle up, because you're about to embark on a journey to success in the IT field.
might think that getting into the IT field is impossible without a computer science degree, but Technical Coach Ralph is here to prove you wrong. Get ready for some jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into this lucrative industry. Listen up, Susan. Are you ready to break through into the IT field, but feel like you need a computer science degree to make it happen? Think again. Technical Coach Ralph has some exclusive, mind-blowing secrets to share with you. Get ready to be blown away by his jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into the tech industry without a computer science degree. So get your notepad ready, because Technical Coach Ralph is going to change your life forever. Buckle up, because you're about to embark on a journey to success in the IT field. Welcome back to Tech Coaching with Ralph. I, of course, am Ralph. So tonight we are going to pick up where we left off. Uh, we'll have a recap of that, but we're going to continue working on our Java and um, Python implementation of WebDriver. Um, but before we do that, I just wanted to uh, give some updates. I have an amazing video that I'm dropping tomorrow around noon, I believe, about, um, so what I did was I went and I implemented um, setting up a Amazon Web Services EC2 instance and then installing Docker and Docker Compose on it. Uh, I followed a guide, but, you know, made it a little bit vivid. Uh, it's very fun. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it a lot. And, um, and yeah, so look out for it. Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment. Leave me some feedback on what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, what I could do better, all that good stuff. Um, on Sunday night, uh, we're going to be continuing. Um, we're going to do our part two of the M3U8 um, parser. We didn't get to finish that last week, but we did some great progress on it. So I uh, just wanted to um, keep you guys informed of that. If you haven't yet, um, please hit a like for the, of the video, share the video with someone who would find it useful and subscribe to the channel so you can get all the latest content that I'm releasing. The month of June is going to be fire content, uh, if I must say so myself, I'm a brag. Um, but yeah, subscribe to the, um, to the channel and um, just have fun learning and exploring the world of software engineering, QA automation, all that good stuff. Because I believe that when you make your work fun, then you will enjoy doing it and you won't be uh, complaining and all that nonsense that a lot of people do. So without further ado, we are going to get into our project that we've been working on for the past two weeks, which is integrating Selenium WebDriver into Java and in Python. So we last left off. We had implemented the page object model inside of our Java project using IntelliJ. And tonight we're going to work on the Python part of it. So here we go. Let's share the screen. 
Bada bing. Bada. 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 Boom. Here we go. Amazing. All right. So, me. That. Okay. So, like I was saying, we left off last time. We were, um, we left off last time. We implemented, um, the Java part. But let's give a full recap. So, we, when we first started, we had to set up the palm.xml file for Maven. So, let's take a quick look at that. Let's do a little recap, you know, because it's been a while since we looked at this. So, we have our um, palm.xml. This is for the Java side. We're in Java right here, IntelliJ. All right. So, we installed TestNG so we can be able to um, mm -hmm. run our test. We did um, we installed the package for Selenium Java. We did uh, the Selenium API um, package. And we did the web driver manager from our good and faithful friend, Bonnie Garcia, who created one of the most, most, most amazing libraries that I've ever seen. Been using this for God knows how long, maybe like the past for almost 10 years now, I'd say. Yeah, it's maybe a little less, but it's, and I've seen like so many iterations of it and I, I can't give enough praise to Bonnie Garcia. This is an amazing package, I must say, on the Java side. I've seen, now that I've came into the world of Python, I've seen um, similar implementations working for the Python side, but this was the first one I was exposed to, which revolutionized setting up a web driver, made my life so much easier. So can't send out enough praise to Bonnie Garcia for that. And so that's, so that's the, that's the, um, Maven part of it, uh, where we set up our, our palm.xml file. And then the first thing that we did on the Java side was we did a basic, basic test case, uh, where we had all of our code was pretty much, um, in line. You can still see some of it over here on this assertion here, which we are going to fix that tonight after we get our Python up to the same level as our Java, we are going to fix this because we don't, we don't believe in this type of code inside of our main test cases. That is a no, no, that is not what kind of forever. That is a no, no. We do not accept that bad practice, bad, bad practice. All right. And we're going to fix that though. So where is my AC? Okay. All right. Let's get a little chilly in here. Let's do it. All right. So we, there's that. And then we're gonna so we're gonna fix that and make this a little bigger we're gonna fix this because this is ugly this is ugly we're gonna fix all that and make it all nice and pretty all right so we so we did that and then we started so last week in particular we started implementing our page object model so the page object model quick recap we have all the elements of the page that and all the associated um actions i would say uh put in a particular class and inside that class we have all of our locators and we have our getters and our setters and uh, we have our methods so let's take a quick look at our home page object factory so we have um our we have our selectors our web elements and then we have our getters. I don't really, I don't use setters when I'm doing um, the page object model. There, I don't find any particular need for it because these are the elements, and then these are the getters. So we don't, and I always put these as private because I do not want if I'm having someone working on the project well as well. Um, I do not want them to be overwriting my web elements. So I set the getter so they can have access to them, but they do not have direct access to this part right here unless they were to actually come in and edit the code. But from outside the code, they would not be able to access it. All right. And then I have methods in here. All right. So this one, I, I do this because like I like to have um I like to have like the steps printed out of what I'm doing. Depending on what type of logging that you're using, you can use like uh, the loggers you can have this you, you can use this to report to to send to the SNG report 
uh, so like so many ways. So and, and that's one of the reasons that I I do it like this, which even this step itself in a more detailed framework, which maybe we'll do one day, we will go through either one of the frameworks that I've created or we can create an, a new framework. It, it, we'll see. All right. But that's not, that's not important right now. The point is that uh, I've, I've even added, like I would even add like the print inside of a method, right? Inside the framework. And then I can add, I can have it sent the, the text that I'm outputting to different places. So that means to loggers, to reporting, to just the print it out to the console itself, many different options, but let's not get into that right now. Right? So we have, um, so we have our methods. So this is saying like click accept cookies. So it's prints out click accept cookie button. And then it says get accept cookie, uh, which is up here and then click it. Right? So now all we have to do is call click accept cookie. Like we see in here, home dot click accept cookie. And then it takes you, it, it does this action right here. So it comes in here and then it says, okay, let's print this out. And then it says, oh, look for get accept cookie and then click it. And so it finds this and it sees that it is related to this. And because this is a web element, it has actions associated with it. And that action that we're calling is the click, right? If that doesn't make much sense to you, feel free to leave me a comment and I will personally respond to you because I want whoever is watching this video who is interested in Qt Automation to be the best Qt Automation person at their company or organization, the best. And I will work with you to make sure that you are very innovative and creative in all of the automation work that you do so you can leave a lasting impression on whoever, whoever you work with, all right? Perfect. So this is the Java side. Um, and like I said, I, I was working with Java for the past 10 years doing automation. Just last year, I learned Python. And since maybe since like February or early March, I've been fully doing automation in Python using Behave, believe it or not, which we do plan to do a series on Behave because I have mixed feelings about it, but for the most part, I like it. You might not even know what Behave is. Oh, I didn't know either. But what Behave is, is a Cucumber Gherkins based language for Python, which allows us to automate. You can think of it almost as an equivalent, although they work totally different, but the way that um, TestNG is a runner, Behave is pretty much a runner in its own rights, right? So we'll get into that one day, just not today, all right? Perfect. So we have our page object factory. So we have a page object model. But what I did, I kind of jumped the gun last week because when I do the page object factory, I automatically go to do the page object. See, I always confuse the two. When I do the page object model, I automatically go and I jump into doing the page object factory because to me, they go hand in hand, right? You can't have one without the other. It is the peanut butter for my jelly, right? Perfect. So here we go. So the page object model is here. This is using the page object model. And I'm saying that, see, I keep confusing. I'm using the page factory. What I'm doing here is I'm setting the web element and I'm saying, find this web element by its CSS selector. And in this one, I'm saying, find this web element by its ID. And I'm saying, find this web element by its XPath. Which one do we typically prefer to use? Number one, always go with ID first, if possible. If, and I say big if, your web developers are kind enough to put IDs inside of their code. Right? And I think it's really important that we work with our, with our um, web developers to try to put IDs in there. Um, and sometimes it's not always possible to put IDs, but you can put these custom ones for like I've seen it called like um, automation test ID or QA test ID, something like that. And then you give it a value or where you can call it like input field, right? So like this one right here would have been awesome if they were to give it like a test, a QA test ID. And it said, um, find food button instead of us having to use this god awful X path. But it is what it is, right? 
we don't work for, for Uber Eats and we don't have access to the developers. Maybe we can have access to their QAs and coach their QAs to working with their developers to give better IDs so they can make the automation testing of Uber Eats a hundred times easier. That would be my goal. Anyhow, let's keep going, why don't we? So here we are. This is where so this is where we're at. So we have our we have our um web elements and our selectors here, but when using the page factory, we have to create a constructor. Right? So this is the constructor right here. We say, so this is the class home, and we create a construct a constructor, right? And we pass the web with the web driver to it, and we say this web driver, this web driver right here is equal to the web driver that gets passed in here. And then we say page factory initiates elements for this driver on this page. All right. And how does that end up becoming into action? So if we look here on the Uber Eats, we say we're going to take the class of home and create an instance of it called home. And we're getting a new instance and we're passing this driver, this Chrome driver into it. And now, so this goes, so it says create this home that we're going to be using here. And that's going to be an instance of this home right here. And we're going to take this driver right here. And we're going to pass it to this right here. And then when it gets passed here, it's saying this driver is equal to the driver that we're passing here. Right? And then this page factory using this driver right here and here. And that allows all these elements in here to use this driver right here. I don't know if you followed along with that. Because it's a lot of driving going around. Um, so much driving. I feel like we are in the Fast and the Furious, right? Either way, we can get into that a little bit more another time. But that's a quick rundown of what we did, right? That's the Java side. And just for its and giggles, let's give it a runny run run. So we are on our test. Let's see if it still works. I press the play button and we sit back and watch. I'll tell you this, like there's like when I'm when I'm creating tests. A big portion of the time is running the test, rerunning the test, rerunning it again, watching it, seeing what fails, editing. Like, remember, see, look at this. This is just great. This is just great. Oh, invalid selector. A valid or illegal selector was specified. It's a little different. What did I do wrong? I wish I had my soundboard. All right, let's see. We go here. There you go here. Uh, let's see here. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. In here, what did we do wrong in here? Except, oh, look at that. So uh, maybe we didn't run it last time. So this is what happened. This says XPath, but. We have CSS here, and this is the error that you get. Invalid selector, invalid or illegal selector was specified. Expat. And we run it again. It worked this time. Don't quote me on that. I'm really going to try to get us out of here a little bit earlier today. Not trying to do a two hour stream on a Thursday night when most of us have to work in the morning. Oh, they're probably watching this on the replay anyways. Yeah, I'm talking to you. All righty. Ooh, fat boy sushi and kitchen. Nice. Nice choice, Uber Eats. Imagine if you use the script to, you know how like when you're with your girlfriend or boyfriend, 
husband or wife. And you're like, oh, what do you want to eat tonight? And it's like, I don't know. What do you want to eat tonight? And you're like, oh, let's get chicken wings. No, I don't want that. And so what about if you just, like, we built, like, a random Uber Eats order generator, and it just goes Uber Eats and puts something, puts two meal, two random meals in the cart, and it has it, it pays for it, it has it delivered to your address in the next 30 minutes, and it pops up, and your food is delivered, and you don't even have to think about what you're going to eat. Like, we can automate our Friday night food selection. How about that? Look at that. New ideas on the spot. I'm going to copyright that. Okay, so this failed. Why? Jesus Christ, Uber Eats, what's wrong with you? Oh, it might have failed because it couldn't. Um... Remember last time it was failing because, like, it required some type of. Require some type of thing that you need to click on. Um, maybe they don't have pictures on there for Fat Boy Sushi. I don't remember. I didn't see it, but maybe they don't have pictures. I'm gonna run it one more time, but we're not gonna get hung up on that because we want to get to Python. That's the recap for Java. That's what we did last week, um, and this is what we've been doing for the past couple of weeks. And I'm really, really, really hoping to get this done tonight. I don't. I really don't want to do a part four, but. If we have to, then it is what it is. We will, I will gladly do a part four to help you, yes, you, get up and going with Selenium WebDriver in Python or in Java. The choice is yours. And if you prefer one over the other, let me know which one. Oh, look at that, it passed. But if you prefer one over the other, let me know which one you prefer and why. I'm curious. I am really curious to know which one you prefer. Is it Java or Python? Or maybe, yes, maybe, maybe it's C Sharp. Maybe it's Ruby. Hmm. Maybe you don't prefer Selenium at all. And this is a total waste of time for you. Maybe you prefer Playwright. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe you prefer that JavaScript one. Hmm. I don't know. You tell me. Anyways, that's that. Our Java passed. Got us some Taco Bell. Yo quiero Taco Bell. See? And let's move on to live sound effects. How about that? All right. So let's do our Python stack. So I already created the home for Python. And let's do this. Let's pull up a guide for Python because Python is slightly different. So we can consider this our um, page object factory class, quote unquote. And why do I have it in capital? We don't, we don't do capital in Python for our names. Jesus Christ, what are you doing? I must have been sleeping when I did this. I'm embarrassing. Jesus Christ. All right. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Let's see here. Let's go like this and like that. We're going to go to find a guide. Gonna find a guide because sometimes it's best to use a guide to walk through it because I might know how to do it. Like you saw, I was able to like to pull it off the top of my head for Java, but like I said, I am fairly new to Python, and that's the wonderful thing about engineering as a whole, but QA engineering in particular. You don't have to memorize every single little thing that you do. You can follow guides because the goal, and like I said, I'm going to tell you this, the goal is to get it to work. It's not like those interviews where they just want you to have a particular answer and they're, they're just trying to lead you down a path just so you can say what they want because they've been trained to only think 
the way that they were taught. No, no, no. We don't do that over here. We think for ourselves. We think outside the box. We think creatively. And by thinking creatively, that gives you the opportunity to be innovative, which that's what we want because we are solution-based. The only thing that matters to me are the results. Right? Look at that. Think big, live simply. We think big. We make our lives easier and we make everybody else's lives easier that we come in contact with. And that's the goal. And that's what I want for you. All right? So, on that note, let's see how we do this. So, Python page object. Let's, do, let's start with the page object model for Python, right? And let's see here. Which guide would we use? Eh, let's look at Medium. I like Medium articles for the most part. I could use this one actually. Let's, be, eh, let's, let's, look, let's see what Zach Bunch has to say about the page object model. Testing or planning, Jesus, or planning on using Selenium for your next project. This article will walk you through the best practices when using Selenium. We will begin looking at a design pattern that has become popular in test automation for enhancing test maintenance and reducing code duplication. The page object model is an object oriented programming design pattern in Selenium where pages are represented as classes that hold methods or actions needed to interact with a web page. The testing suite uses the method from the page object whenever they need to interact with the UI. If the UI changes throughout a product's lifetime, the tests themselves do not need to change. Instead, only the code within the page object needs to change. This is what I was saying to you guys last time about the page object when we were doing it on the Java side. Same exact thing across, across languages. They all, the page object model is a model, right? It's not a language, it's a model. And we can use that across, like I said, Java, Python, C Sharp, JavaScript, whatever. Right. On that note, the advantages of implementing the page object model, clean separation between test code and, and page specific code, such as locators. Amen to that, brother. Single repository for the operation allowed on a page rather than having these services spread out throughout the test. Exactly. And might be the most important readability. Having a bunch of source code from HTML and CSS and all that stuff in your test is a recipe for disaster. It's so much easier to just read home dot click accept button home dot fill in search blah 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 right perfect cool. So structuring page object model in Python, we we will start off by creating a new Python project in Visual Studios. I personally don't use Visual Studios when I don't have to. I am more of a JetBrains type of guy. I love PyCharm. I love IntelliJ. I just started using um, WebStorm the other day, and uh, I like it. I like it a lot. So here we go. Uh, so you, of course, you can use any text editor that you like, and trust me, that I will. Create a folder called Pages. Create a folder called Resources. Create a folder called Tests. Create a folder called Driver. And I like lowercase, but that if you want to use uppercase for your folders, by all means have at it, buddy. And there goes your structure. And we are not going to follow um, his thing 100% because uh, he, when I see this folder called drivers, he's probably going to be going more towards a framework uh, where he's creating the drivers in that framework. And I am not going to get into that because that's a whole project in itself, which we will. Maybe <laughs> we will be looking at uh I'll do this. I will do a video showing frameworks that I created for some technical project that I did. And I and then maybe one day we can actually create a framework if you're really interested in that. If you are interested in a video for a framework, subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. If you subscribe to the channel, then I will I'll do it. If you subscribe to the channel and you ask me for it, I'll do it. All right. If you don't subscribe to the channel and you ask me for it, I'll think about it. But I'll probably do it anyways. But I'll do it faster if you subscribe, right? So here we go. 
So we, so he's saying, do this. All right, I'm not doing. Oh, okay. Touch. YT page, home page, base page, blah, blah. Resources, touch locators. Under the test directory, create base test. Blah. Yeah. Zach, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Um, the drivers, which, you know what? I'll link this article in the description if you want to do it like Zach did. Um, I don't have that type of time in my life to, to do this. Uh, all right. So the driver directory will hold a different, the different browsers that we want to test, such as Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari. For the sake of the story, we will need Chrome driver for, so our Python code can interact with, uh, download the proper version of Chrome driver based on your, oh, Zachy, Zachy, Zachy. Wait, you know what? Hold this article. Let me see how this article is. 2002, Zach? Are you serious? Zach, come on. Come on, buddy. Come on. Uh, you're not using the, uh, you're not using the, the web driver factory? Come on. What is it? Download the driver. Who does that in, in 2023, Zach? Even in 2022, who does that? Come on, buddy. All right. Anyways, we keep going. We need to be able to locate the items on the web page so that we can interact with them. Thankfully, Selenium provides eight different built-in element locating strategies, class name, CSS selector, ID, link text, name, by dot, partial link text, tag, XPath. So I'll tell you this, I never use this. I use this all the time. I use this as much as I can. I never use this. I never use this. And don't think I ever use this. Maybe once in my lifetime. Tag, I never use tag. XPath, that is my third go-to. Like when there's no ID, when the CSS selector is just about impossible to use, then I have to settle for the XPath. Settle, I do. All right. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So, okay. Thanks for the info. Like I said, you can read, you can read Zach's article on your own if you want. Okay. So here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. So class home is, yeah, I'll follow along with you. Why not? So we're going to start with this method. Um, this is like the traditional page object model way of doing it, which I skipped in the Java portion because they said, um, I mean, you can learn it, but if you can just use the page factory, like why waste your time? Like, like I said, this bothers us. I don't believe in like wasting time. Fine. Go ahead. Learn it. You know, be familiar with it, but don't like, don't use it. Like just be effective, be productive. You know what I mean? So anyways, let's do this. Um, so he says from selenium dot web driver dot common dot by import by yeah and we're gonna say class home page oh I see what you're doing no, I don't want to do that well I could do that uh home page i'm just gonna put that inside i'm not gonna put that inside the locators class as he is i'm gonna put that inside of my home and maybe i'll regret it later who knows all right so home page locate locations funny all right i'm gonna do let me see let me open this as well and we have on the home page we had do accept cookies. So we're gonna do accept cookies button. And I like to be very descriptive with my um my variable names so it can be easily understood what it is. I don't want like v1, v2, var1, var2, all of that nonsense. I want very descriptive. Like sometimes they're like very long, but I want them readable. Right, I don't want some abbreviated thing that I'm like, what the hell did that stand for? Nope, we don't do that. Not a good um, design practice. So we're gonna say this one is gonna be by dot xpath, comma, and then we're gonna go here. We're gonna take this little bad boy right here. We're basically gonna just copy that whole thing, but let's say we do that, and we copy 
that. Uh, where do I start from? I can close this out. What is this notification? All right, there's more space on the screen. Great. So we don't need that quote. And we're going to go in home. We're going to say, let's use double quotes here. All right, we got that. And then let's do our next one, which was. The ID of the delivery address, or let's call it address field, or let's call it delivery address field. So this one, like there's no semicolons at the end of Python, so delivery address input field equals, and then this one's going to be by dot ID, and then here. Uh, it's good with our spacing. What do you write about here? Okay, let's remove redundant parentheses. All right, cool, perfect. So we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna do. There was another thing in there. We're gonna say the fine food button. I'm just gonna copy this whole thing because we already typed it out once. So why type it out again? Fine food button equals all right okay so there goes our home page selector let's see what, what else did you do that ah okay so this is so you see like i said he's just just by me looking i've been doing this so long right just by me looking at the folder structure that he created with the base test and all of that i knew that he was going to I knew that he was going to like start implementing some um, framework type stuff, which this is great to do, but we're not doing that tonight. Um, that'll be in the in another video. Um, and I see what he's doing here with this locators thing. Um, how do I feel about that? So in resources, he creates locators, right? What do I think about that? So, I think that by putting them all in, because so what I'm anticipating that he's going to do, he's going to have like homepage locators, he's going to have um, like a class for homepage locators in, in the locators file, and he's going to have a, a class for, so in our case, it would be for the food listing page and all of that, right? The thing that I fear with that is this, like if you have a big site, this class can become very big and you have a lot to look through. And I don't I don't like messy. I don't like it to be messy. Like it's like for this example, it might like be a very small test case, but let's think about it in a real live production environment. Let's say you have a huge site with tons of different pages that you get you that you need to set the locators for. That could be pretty big. Well, I would like I'd rather, right, have um this homepage locators class for I'm not even gonna call it because we just call it homepage, right? I have it here, and then I have all my um functions that are associated for the homepage together. So like now there's a change on the homepage. I just go in here and I look for homepage and I do the changes there instead of like having to go through the swamp of a long list of locators. Um locators um, file you know but i mean that's personal preference either way it, it's fine my preference is to do it this way zach's preference is to do it that way i don't think there's anything wrong with that um so you know you're creative you're innovative you do what works for you and your team and i'm gonna do what works for mine boom there we go so here we go we are where are we all right so we got past this we got past this so so this is how Zach is doing this. Um, I'm going to show you a different way um, later but using another package, but it's all good in the hood. So we here. So now let's do this. Um, we're going to do our definition for a function called click accept cookie button and then sell. And then we're going to say, oh, ha, you see, that's always do this. So in Python, you use underscores, not 
camel case click accept cookie button i'm gonna say uh print button let's say we're gonna say except Second, let's see. Let me see. I oh my god. Oops. Let me see. Let me see. I need to get this set button here. All right, Josh. All right, all right, Zach. It's been great. Let's see. Let's get another one in here. Python page object model. Because I have particular ways I like to do it. And that ain't it. So, all right, let's see what's going on here. Page object model. Base page element. This and then I want to. Go. All right, here we go. Love dot accept cookies. Uh, if I remove this though, oh, why didn't it work the first time? Get out of here. All right, so boom, and then I say. All right, let's, you know what, let's check this out because this is acting weird. All right, so this is good. All right, so let's try this out because I want to make, I want to make sure I do this right. So let's see, we are going to accept the cookie. So let's go call in our home equals so we got to import first. So uh, let's do from home pages dot home import home page, and we're gonna say home equals home page. We're gonna do it's not right something is not right let me see because it needs to pass the driver it needs to pass the driver yep I, I saw something wasn't right python page object model See, sometimes it's like a spidey sense. You can sense that something isn't going as you want it to go. Uh, uh, let me see, 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 let me see. All right, let me see what this one does. Uh, let me see. Mm, receptoring page object. Uh, Sierra search input. Def in it. Browser. Self dot browser equals browser. Okay. Initializer on so in the test is search page with the Google browser, and then you have browser.get your 
a lot of um I said it's a lot of research making sure you get this stuff right so they use python fixtures to initialize a chrome driver all right so let's see let's us do this here that's what you know let's 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 get it to fail and we'll figure it out from there like i said growing a bunch of times and you play with it enough you get it to work and you learn we're gonna say home dot click accept cookie button and let's see what happens i know it's gonna fail but it's easier to see it fail troubleshoot from there instead of like trying to do everything in your head based off a uh, theory or concept so oh look at that getting our latest um chrome driver missing one position argument so all right so we need to be able to pass the driver you're not doing it the way i want to do it how do you use python let's look at this guy right quick a little different than java you know but i think how did i do this last time so i think i went to the driver see the test title driver equals web driver leveraging page object model class cart okay so here so that's what i was missing so let's go with these and let's go with function and it self we're gonna do self dot driver equals driver where are you getting driver from oh the driver's in here all right and then they put this in here too okay so yeah i haven't done it this way before but it's perfectly fine to do it that way and then we have the no first job tip. So then we have the init with our driver and our selectors inside of it. And then so that first child dot text. We have first child in here. So this should be self dot why don't you find my cookie button in there all right let's try it except cookie but cookies button dot zip and let's see what happens now if we go here we would say we pass the driver okay so now we're getting a little closer to what we did in um in java so we're passing the driver into the home page so this home is instantiated with the driver so we're going to go here home and all right let's see what happens wouldn't be surprised if we failed again but how we make progress is how we learn All right, so home page object has no attribute except cookie button. But we know it does because it's right here. Oh, 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 yes. See, and, that, and that's the thing that always trips me up with Python is that self in front of it. I gotta refresh my memory on a little bit better what that means. Okay, so we have the self in front of all of them. Now it can find it. And let's see if I go to, so if I do, 
dot accept cookie button dot click. And if we run it again, well, that didn't do what I wanted it to do. Yeah, one more time. Whoa. What's that all about? Oh, wow, uh, funny. Got me, got me good. <laughs> all right, let's see. Does it get to the next step? If it does, we're just going to continue with our page factory. And tighten up. All right, so tuple. Why is that a tuple? What the? Why is that a tuple? Accept cookie button. Bye. We have buy in here. So they want it out. Oh, I see what they're doing. Doing a little differently here. Interesting. Uh, let me see how, how let me see how Zach uses it in the code. So initializer uh, base page. And Oh, Zach, we just did them here. All right, so set up super self home, home page self dot driver. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, Zach. Letting me down, buddy. Super object has. Driver. So self dot. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is different than the. All right, I got it. This is different than the. So there's a couple of ways to do this, right? I'm gonna show you both, but so I've seen it done before. Like it's um. Either way, but well, let me see. I yeah, I could do the driver dot find element, and then they do something like this, and then they'll do like accept or self dot accept cookie button, and then you do like dot click or something like that. I don't even know if this is gonna work, but let me let me see if this works because I've seen it done this way before, but uh, I don't know if it's gonna be able to. Get to pull this driver out of it. Well, it should because it's right here. Yeah, let's give it a run. Let's see. We're all about figuring things out over here. Doing the practice work so we can shine on the when we're on the playing field. And I did that again. Oops, I did it again. All right, so here you go. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Invalid argument using must be a string. What the does that mean? Yeah, I didn't think that was gonna work. All right, let's do it. Let's do it the the way that the other. Article is doing a driver dot. Oh, I doesn't know what the driver is. Interesting. Interesting. So the driver. Okay. What? You actually did this part over here? That's the part I want to get to. All right, so we got driver dot that. That's what we did. From Selenium web driver import web driver. All right, it's from Selenium import web driver. From Selenium. Import. 
Jesus Christ, where are you? Let me see here. All right, let's look at this one. Where Where is the web driver located? Oh, okay. The capitals. From center import. Web driver. And then we could say. Okay. Let's go up a little bit. We don't want to see this yet. Mm. So let's see there. So okay. Okay. Command find element. Using by value. Okay. Invalid argument. Using must be a string. Now it's using. I don't know that. So, all right, let's say. Driver dot find element. By okay, so we have that passing this in here should do it. Except the button, it's passed. Except cookie button is a tuple. The tuple. So if you do driver dot find element. Uh, talking about here. But let me do this. All right, home page. Over the line. Stuff that driver. See, this is why I created this this channel because it's so hard to find a good guy to use. Let's see. I have used many in my lifetime. Just to accumulate all of this information, Java, not Java. We are on the Python side of things. Let me see what this one offers. This is the Selenium Python site. So, okay, that's why we don't want it. So, this is more like it. Okay, so. A okay, so I see what I'm doing wrong for the most part. This is Java though, not Python. But with that being said, mm, let's see. You see here. I really want to get to this part right here. Python page object model. Let's see here. Page object model. But these websites are be so bogus sometimes. Automation bro. What's up, automation bro? What you got for me, bro? All right. Uh, 
That's home page. Da -da, assert, blah blah. Home page base class. Yes. What? Damn. These don't make no sense sometimes. All right. So self document. Okay. So. <sighs> Good. Never have clear documentation, and that's why we do these videos so we can learn together. Because a lot of times you're just following this, you're you know messed you up. All right, so here we go. Driver stuff. Dude has no idea the drivers. So let's do. Where are we getting to? Okay, so it does it gets all the way here and then it gets here and then it it's like it doesn't know what to do. All right, cool. So let's do Ah, okay, so we're gonna do a little differently. So how do we did it in here? It's by fine element. Oh it's good. It's just a, so fine element by this. It doesn't make much of a difference for that this or not. But take that. So let's do it like this, right? We're gonna we're gonna trick the system a little bit. If I go here and I go, see, and this is how, this is how we troubleshoot things, right? We um so we don't want stuff over here. We want home, right? And if we do this, that's not the one we want it for. Let's do it like this. And then we can refactor it once we figure this out. Okay, driver dot home dot final dot flip. And if that works, then we can we can continue to our refactoring. And sometimes using the guides can mess you up because you're trying to follow what they're doing instead of following your instincts and your learning ability. You know what I mean? So anyways, let's give this a run. So what we're doing now is we're passing the we're passing the element into the we're passing the element into the um into here, right? And let's see the results of that. Invalid argument. What the hell is this using thing? Must be. I do not know what the using thing is. All right, so using value value. What did you want it to be? So I don't see how this is different than the other one now. I can see click here. Find element by ID dot these button and self dot by Using. Let's Google it. Let's see what that means. When in doubt, we Google. Oops. Copy that. Paste it here. God. Did it work out to my expectation? Copy that. Let's see what that means. What the heck is this? Oh my goodness.
uh, I step over here. All right, here we go. Stack Overflow, our faithful friend. Who we'll wouldn't Stack Overflow? That's what we use the most as any type of engineer, but especially in Q engineering. All right, so we have class, okay, we test, log and path, da da. Let's go to the solution. Maybe I did mine wrong. So let's see, login button equals self dot driver dot. Right way is login button dot self dot driver dot found element by. Isn't, that's not what I have. Oh, I see what they're saying. So I see what they're saying. E, you put everything in here instead of pulling it out over here, which I mean makes sense to use it to find element. So we can let's do this then. Oh, let's try this. Let's go with like they have in this one. Let's see what happens. All right, so this failed again. Oh, that's because we have different code here. So let's see if we did home dot click, click start button. Let's see what results we have here. I'm going to put the asterisk in front of that one, but whatever. Let's go. Right. Okay, so we got past it. So, all right, we figured. So, it was that asterisk. All right, cool. So, let's see when this is done, what the asterisk means. And we know with the, see, and that's the point of doing this, you know, took us some time to do it, but we got it. And very important because now we, because I saw that asterisk um, in some code before, but I wasn't exactly sure because I don't really use the page, the page object model in that fashion in particular. But now I know, and that is good to know. So let's do this. We are going to, all right, so we're good here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go here and we have, all right, so the asterisk means in arguments, all position arguments other than the first one will be packed in a tuple as they won't get changed. The exact property will be reflected in the second step. All right, cool. We can rock with that. How did they do it here? So they said the right way login dot find element by x path. Hmm. I got the check, but all right. Well, I mean, never mind. You know, I take that back. Cause just because you, you have a check, it just means you accepted your own answer, Mohan. Um, so this one might actually be the right answer because I've seen this in code before. Either way, let's keep going. Um, we are pressed for time tonight. So we got that. Let's continue to refactor a bit. Let's do, like we did in um, Java, we're gonna do def, um, function definition, enter delivery address. Now we're going to pass the address to it. And we're going to say print enter delivery address. Let's do a f string here. Here's a uh, thing. Boom. We're going to do 
uh, self dot driver find element. Now we're going to do self dot delivery address input field dot then these address. And then we're going to say definition click. No, I got definition function definition click find food button self and then print. food self dot driver dot find element and it still to me is a lot of text right so we are going to see in the, we're going to there's a there is a page object model or page object factory way of doing it in um python which we are going to look into i'd like to have enough time to do it tonight but if not there's always next week friends of course Self dot find food button dot clicky de click clack and we are going to do a method to simplify that. So def dot search or er, let's call it search for restaurants based on delivery user entered delivery address why wow, am i competing for the longest method name ever that's addressed to this we are going to do enter self dot enter delivery address and we're going to pass address and i'm going to fix my terrible typo and we're gonna do here we go. now we're gonna do self dot click find food button excuse me now we're going to go to our Uber Eats file oh there is a sleep in between those two so we're going to add this sleep hard coded for now, but just for now. And we're going to import our time library into this class. Not the one I use for this holiday. It's not that one, buddy. Trying to pull a fast one on me. Just import time. Import time. That's all I want. I just want to import the time, right? Want import time. All right. So now we're going to go here. Now we're gonna say, oopsie. We're going to say take this out and we say home dot um search for restaurant based on the delivery address. And we lost our address. Perfect. Just freaking perfect. All right, we're gonna do this. Copy. And let's redo. Always, I'm always undoing and redoing, right? And then we're gonna put that in here. So now, when we run this, it should take us to the results page based on these two right here. And we're off. Let's see what happens. Yeah, put that there. All right. Let's see what's going on here. All right, enter the address. So that worked. Our page object model is functioning just like I like to see. Wendy, I can go for some Wendy's right now. I love the Baconator. I don't see the name of that other sandwich. Um, it's a Baconator, but it has like a special barbecue sauce on it. 
but I shouldn't be eating cheese. But oh, anyway, whatever. All right, so we are good here. Pull that back up. All right, so we're good with that. Appreciate the assist. So now we have our home page factory created. So let's create a page for results. Results.ui. Now we're in, in results. We're going to do the same thing as we did our home page. We're going to import Selenium WebDriver. Just copy that. Like who remembers this path to these things, right? So we're going to do less. Call that results. I'm going to say in Death in it self dot driver equals driver. I guess we should pass a driver over to you. And then we're gonna do let's copy this X path for or let's copy the CSS selector for H1. We're gonna call that um page heading equals that and we're going to take as well oh can be sneaky with that that's just it's gonna we we refactor we get it to work and then we refactor i always got to remember that like like sometimes i beat myself over with this Get it to work and then refactor. Get it to work and then refactor. Get it to work and then refactor. All right, let's go. So here we are. We're going to do. Uh, let's call this a uh, adult listing equals, which is this is going to be the second item, but let's do by dot x path. All right, so we got that. And we're going to do here. And is there anything else on the results page? I think that was it. After you click on the results page, it takes you to the actual um, restaurants page, the menu of that restaurant. So we're going to, so I think we're going to stop at this point. And then next week we can actually work on the page object model and we can um finish up with this like so and we'll talk about that in a second. So uh let's do this because I want to let's finish this page, right? We're gonna say um def equals Page results page heading. So, and then we're going to say, let's say validate. And say assert self dot page. See, uh, like I said, I always forget this part. Always, and then I'm like, why can't I see them my my um my variables and stuff? So page heading, where that page heading is equal or page heading dot text. Because if you don't do the dot text, it's going to be um it's gonna be just like the code of the of the driver and not the actual um not the actual text that you're looking for so it won't be all sorts it'll be just like you know we can do it let's actually do it you know um just so you can see what i mean so let's go here and let's say so we're going to validate the results so now we don't really need this line anymore. Brat. So we're going to do, um, so let's just instantiate 
this so we're gonna do um results equals results what do i name this method it should be results oh what in it no got home page results okay Oh, oh, ha! You see, like you always, like as you do this, you always come up with stuff. So from pages dot results import results. Okay, so now we're gonna do results dot driver. We're gonna pay my driver. Okay, so no dot here. Thank you very much. And now we're gonna go way over here. We're gonna say results dot uh, results dot results listing. And let's see if that works. Let's see if this works. So we have this. All right, so let's give it a runny run run, see what happens. We already commented out something else. And we'll see how that goes. Um, that goes well. I think we're at a good start stopping spot for tonight. And then next we can totally focus on implementing the page. The page factory. Now with the page factory, it's gonna you're gonna see like all this that we just did, it's gonna get so much easier. Using the page factory, it's like, and especially the one through Python, I, I find it pretty impressive. So, um, stay tuned for that. All right, so it went through. Look at that. Um, so this one went through. So here is going through the home here is going through the home this one is going through the results and then next you can create a one for like after you actually select the restaurant to what to do in that part so so the goal for next week is to do the page uh, the page factory for um finish it up for java and then to implement it for python Made good good progress tonight. Um but I gotta get to bed and you gotta get to bed. So we have so this is where we're stopping, right? So come next week we're gonna create one for um the a page for the restaurants um information. And then we're gonna just finish up with this. We have like not too much to go. So we're gonna finish that up. And hopefully we get to finish next week. If not, we just keep it rolling. You know what I mean? Um, but hopefully that you found this informative. I am going to, we had a good run and let's do this. All righty then. So uh, hopefully you found this very informative. Um, I know it was it was a bit slow in, in the middle when we were trying to figure out the, the Python page object factory, but we did it together, you know. Um, and this is this is the true heart of um, quality engineering. You figure things out. Um, I, I forgot I, I meant to um, say this in the beginning, but from our very first live stream when we were exploring um, Selenium Wire, I had some time yesterday to. Um, dive into it a little bit more so i never actually got a serious answer for when, from the, the ticket that i posted um in the for the issue i posted in Sunday um some some person had ran this had responded to me but the funny thing is um they then they posted another thing saying they have no idea how to use Sunday and they're asking for help so i don't know what that was about 
Uh, I think sometimes you feel like they are required to contribute. And I think sometimes it's also helpful to listen as well. Um, but I was able to figure it out. Um, I'm going to do a video about that on, um, cause I think it's such a powerful tool. So now I'm trying to advocate to be able to get that working in our, in our actual environment, but I know how, I know what the problem is. I know how to fix it. Um, and so I'm going to make a video for that. Um, I don't, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to live stream it or show it in action, or if I'm just going to do a pre-recorded video. But, uh, besides that, Put on your thinking caps and be innovative, right? This like what what we went through tonight is the heart of this channel. It is to see the trials and tribulations that you go through when you're trying to implement um particular text. And and I've implemented the page object model plenty of times, but I'm not too good with it in I'm not too good with it in um Python yet, right? So and I kind of skipped to the page um factory when i was in python uh so that's why we had that little hiccup in there but it's, it's good for you to see the things that you go through as a qa engineer and how you end the learning process i think that if we could get like the newer qa engineers to think the way that we pr like to process the way that we, we, we process it tonight you can see that they can um, really revolutionize the way that they think about QA and the way they think about testing and the way they think about automation, right? Um, so, like, this is, we're going to, so now we're going to have a fourth part to this. But with that fourth part, um, I hope that I've been able to open your mind a little bit more to the way that you think about automation and writing your, your code and not to be discouraged if you see a lot of failings going back to back. You fail it until you pass it. You know what I mean? Um, so that there's that. Uh, I, so like I said earlier, look out for tomorrow's video. It is about setting up Selenium. No, Selenium. No, it's about setting up an EC2 instance on AWS and then installing Docker and Docker Compose on it. We're going to go from start to finish getting that to work. When I say start, I'm under the assumption that you already have an AWS account. But what if you do, we log into there and then we go through the process of creating the EC2, logging into the EC2 with um with the proper uh with the a sage key and then going through the command line of a of a um, Linux machine, the Amazon Linux machine, and installing Docker and Docker Compose. So look out for that and um most likely Sunday night, we're going to be live streaming about part two of the M3 U8 parser. So, yeah. Um, leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Like the video. And definitely subscribe to the channel. When you subscribe to the channel, more people get um, know about it. And we're able to spread this information out to all of our QA engineers who are who are engineered to win. On that note, friends, have a wonderful night. And if I don't talk to you then, have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful Memorial Day weekend.
might think that getting into the IT field is impossible without a computer science degree, but technical coach Ralph is here to prove you wrong. Get me for some jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into this lucrative industry. Listen up, tech enthusiasts. Are you ready to break through into the IT field, but feel like you need a computer science degree to make it happen? Think again. Technical coach Ralph has some exclusive, mind-blowing secrets to share with you. Get ready to be blown away by his jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into the tech industry without a computer science degree. So get your notepad ready, because technical coach Ralph is going to change your life forever. Buckle up, because you're about to embark on a journey to success in the IT field. Thank you.